gonna hit record on this. Thanks. Uh, you're gonna record it? Yeah, yeah, if that's okay. It, it, it's just easier later for the police decision logs. Uh, sure, of course. Also, for this case, having such a tough jurisdictional element, you know, it's best that we've got absolutely everything backed up, yeah? Hmm, yeah, good call. Okay, for the records, the time is 11.32 GMT on June the 24th, 2023. I am Detective Chief Inspector Tessa McAllister. Would you mind introducing yourself, Mr O'Farrell? Uh, of course. Um, Michael O'Farrell. Uh, I'm the Chief Executive Officer for Keone Industries. Thank you. It's early there for you, right? Uh, don't worry. <laughs> I'm an early riser. OK, look, cards on the table, Mr O'Farrell. Like, I, I, I'm really only just getting up to speed in this case. Uh, of course, from... Detective. We simply wanted to make you aware that uh, uh, we, uh, Keone, are here for every bit of assistance you need in your inquiries. Of course. That's great, thanks. I just want to make sure you get off to a great start and have everything you need. Yeah, that, well, that's really kind of you. So I'm planning to start you know, Life on the base means, uh, well, it's close to six months without light. Over 150 days of darkness. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, that does things to people. You, you truly wouldn't believe it, I'm telling you. You, you. you stick to a routine, sure, but your body has no idea when to go to sleep, when to get hungry, when to... Well, anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, by the end of it, you've got T3 brain. It's like some kind of dementia. It, it, it takes real strength. Right, yeah. And it takes the whole crew to stick together, mm -hmm. um, look after each other. You, you, you're going to need to understand that, uh, keep it front and center oh, yeah, with everyone. Yeah, no, well, actually, my dad was on the rigs, oil rigs, North Sea. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Yeah, mud logging. Three months on, one month off, you know, so I got to hear a lot of stories, mostly about inner strength. <laughs> That's good. That's, that, 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 that'll be helpful. Because yeah. uh, it, it, these people, they commit to live six months down there, no contact, mm -hmm. no possibility of contact. Anything goes wrong, they're on their own. Right. No flights in, no flights out. Mm -hmm. uh, any medical emergency, the base doctor has to handle it with just what he's got. Uh, she, you just can't understand it until you've been down there, mm -hmm. lived it. Even in the summer, you're never too far away from danger. You, you, you right. have to rely on your strength, and not just physical, your mental strength, your 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 inner toughness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I do get it. Okay, so then you like got to think about being locked in mm -hmm. for days at a time. It, it, blizzards, worse. We need you to fully understand the context, the world these people have been living in, or are living in. Yeah, I do. I agree. It, it is exceptional. Bowers Wilson Base. It's a very unique circumstance. Yeah, you can't modify unique. Sorry? Uh, so something can't be very unique. You can't be very the only one. I think maybe we mean exceptional. Sorry, who's this? Detective, this is Frank Martinez, Deputy General Counsel for Keone. Oh, oh, right. Have you been there the whole time? Just here on an advisory brief, man. It's just the two of us, Chief Inspector. I, I should have said that at the start. Apologies. Sure. Okay. So, as I was saying, and um, going back to the base, at least this time of year, they each get a room to themselves, but... Uh, you know, sometimes I think maybe that isn't such a good idea. All right. W why is that? Well, in summer, uh, the base is full. Everyone doubles up, bunk beds. Uh, winter, right now, they uh, they spread out. Uh, maybe it creates isolation, you know, just at a time when you need some support. It's like uh, hospitals. Hospitals? Well, studies have shown that patients recover faster when they're sharing a room. It it's not just an economy. Yeah, but these people aren't ill, are they? Far from it, Chief Inspector. Anything but. Yeah, but uh, let's face it. I mean, someone's gone off. We don't need to speculate. Sure, sure. Right. Okay, well, thanks, gentlemen. Look, if we're done, I've got a murder to start investigating, so I better crack on. Murder? Do we need to use that word at this point? Sorry? Well, I'm simply requesting that we keep our minds open. Murder, suicide, oh, accident. Look, sorry, I don't mean to sound snippy, but... There really is no hour. Uh, you're entitled to think whatever you want, Mr... Uh, Martin is. You see, we're, we're very much trained to keep an open mind. 
But for the integrity of the investigation, I do need to approach this case like a murder. Of course. Of course. Also, I believe the advice of the pathologist was that the cause of death is not actually consistent. She's the base medic. <laughs> no, sorry, you're right. I was forgetting. To, it's just habit. Like, either way, I plan to review the base medic's post-mortem later today, but I am led to believe that I do need to approach this as a murder investigation. I'm merely requesting that we don't rule out the possibility of this being some kind of action. Frank, fr Frank, let me. Uh, uh, Chief Inspector, someone as knowledgeable as you will know that some of the old Antarctic bases did develop, uh, well, uh, a reputation. Uh, sure. Significant use of alcohol. Heavy consumption. Uh, drug abuse also, if I'm honest. That was before Keone. We should stress never on a Keone Well, that's base. my point. Uh, Keone decided to move into this area because we have the expertise and experience to run these bases properly. <laughs> and because there just doesn't work east as who is these days. Right? We don't tolerate that kind of drinking culture on our base. It, sure, it's not teetotal, but it, it, it's orderly, uh, respectful. Uh, unwind, don't unravel. We have sniffer dogs and scanners at all embarkation points. It's a zero drugs policy on all our bases. Except you've got a murder instead. An unexplained death. I, I, I'm going to need to start with whoever it is that's in charge down there. Uh, that's Johan Gunnarsson. He's very experienced, very reliable, solid uh, in the right way. Uh, Gunnarsson and his deputy, Matteo Lombardi, they found and retrieved the body. Okay. Is he a company man? Then uh, your man. I mean. Yeah, yeah. He'll provide you with anything you want. Just ask. Uh, Should we be asking? I mean, is it possible that Doctor Fairfield went out for a cigarette, got lost, disorientated? Well, apart from the fact that it takes about twenty minutes to suit up this time. Sure, of year. but maybe some time alone, a walk. I imagine it can get pretty full on. He was angry, maybe frustrated, needed to blow off some steam. Yeah, but Frank, how did he end up in that crevasse? I mean, it's a round trip of at least an hour on foot, and nobody was off base for that. All I'm saying is let's keep an open mind. Exactly, Mr. Martinez. <laughs> That's what we need to investigate. Sorry, you just said it takes about an hour on foot. Well, could someone have travelled by vehicle to this crevasse? I don't know, with a, with a skidoo or something? No, no. This time of year, if it has an engine, it's all wrapped up for winter. We put them in storage there. Right. The engines would freeze, so... Uh, mm -hmm. If anyone is traveling, it's on foot. Mm -hmm. And I believe everyone on the base claims to be able to account for their whereabouts, is that right? Yep. Uh, one of them was even locked up. Yeah, could you possibly talk me through that? It's protocol. Um, if someone acts in a way that is a danger to others, uh, we have to. Mark Rennick has winter over syndrome. Uh, that's pretty rare though, right? Uh, that kind of extreme symptom, yes, uh, mercifully rare. Okay, look, I think I'm going to need to look into Mr. Rennick's breakdown in conjunction with Dr. Fairfield's death, yeah? Of course. Uh, look, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat this for you, Detective. Oh, Tess is fine, uh, really. Two issues like this, one after the other, uh, sure, it's problematic. That's why we're right behind your investigation and why we want to afford you every assistance, every facility. We want... Uh, we need this cleared up. Ideally, of course, before it goes public. Understood. So, look, um, I'll speak to Mr. Gunnison, and then we'll start setting up the... Uh, we'd love you to announce an arrest, and that'd be the first the world hears of it. Or maybe it's all cleared up without arrests. <laughs> Boy, you got to admire this guy. Yeah, look, I I'm going to need to speak to everyone on the base. Um, then I'm going to form a full timeline where everyone was during the time of Dr. Fairfield's death, and, and then we can start chipping away at it from there. Mark Rennick was confined. That's one down. Yeah. Although, of course, then. I mean, I'd still like to speak We must to him. take into consideration that he's in fragile condition. Oh, look, don't worry. I'm quite accustomed to handling fragile individuals. Took a course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't doubt it. Yeah, I'd also ideally like some blood samples taken from him. There'll be issues of consent. Uh, Dr. Vatra will be able to do that for you. Uh, uh, what else do you need, Detective? Well, I, I, as I say, my team and I will need to organize interviews with each crew member. Johan will make that possible for you. We're limited to the windows when satellite comms are up, of course. And we'll need to coordinate on timing so I can schedule my people. 
Sorry? I was thinking that if you could manage something like 8 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 8 p.m. your time is 3 p.m. for us. Yes, uh, uh, we can schedule our people to be available from 3 p.m. onwards. I'm really sorry, but you've lost me. What are we scheduling? Oh, sorry, the base crew interviews. All right. Uh, look, I I'm afraid I'd rather interview everyone without the company present. You know, that, in my experience, we works a, a lot better. We have a duty of care, Detective, for our employees, for everyone at a Keone base. If they are going to be interrogated by police officers, they have every right to legal counsel. Uh, no one's going to be under caution initially. Uh, no one's under oath. No Miranda warning. It, we don't actually use that term here, but, but no, no, no possibility of self-incrimination. So they can say whatever they want. Lie? Well, I'd rather they felt open to talk. And if they've got a company lawyer sitting there, you know, there's a good chance they might just clam up. 16 no-comment interviews isn't going to help anyone, You Frank. want the other 15 guys suing you into Kingdom Come over duty of care? I need 16 of them, and that's assuming there's only one killer, to feel that they can talk to me, you know, open up. Like, they're not going to do that if there's a company guy sitting there off-camera, scribbling notes, trashing their future careers, do you get me? Civil suits could run to millions, Mike. We need answers, Frank, and we need them quick. I'm going to go with Tessa's way of doing things. She's the expert. She's got to do things how she wants. You can tell the family. Well, I don't think the Fairfields are going to have a strong opinion on this one. Sorry, are you in contact with the family? Naturally. Uh, uh, we have a duty of care to anyone hosted on our facilities, and that extends to their families. All right, okay. Well, obviously they're on my call list, so... Uh, naturally... They just want this wrapped up. Yeah, of course. As does everyone down on the base. They're in a quasi-lockdown right now, mostly eating in their own rooms. Research is being carried out in shifts, and only essential base maintenance is being carried out. Uh, sorry, just to clarify, is that lockdown for their safety, yeah? Well, yes. Uh, with all due respect, Detective, there's a murderer, well, uh, probably, not uh, definitely, very probably, walking around that base. We need to find them. Any way we can, and as soon as we can. Yeah, of course. Any other business we should go through now, gentlemen, that you think is urgent, anyway? Um, uh, not for me. Uh, Frank? Sure. We're done. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, gentlemen. That, that's me logging off, then. Uh, speak soon, Detective. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs>